Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another Photoshop User TV. We are sponsored by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. The folks that bring you Photoshop User Magazine 10 times a year mm -hmm. have the great website, discounts, all kinds of stuff. Very nice. I am Pete Collins. I'm one of the Photoshop guys here. And I am going to just take a second and let that dance around there. And now we go off of it. And then I'm going to introduce this lovely person on the left, Corey Barker, 3D Master. How are you doing, Corey? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all, all right. All is well, all is well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good Halloween? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. yeah. It was scary, but. It was ghoulish. It was ghoulish. ghoulish. It was but hey, we're here to give you a great Photoshop user TV show, and we're going to start it off with a great deal from Peach Pit Press. They have a digital version of this. Don't get confused. This is just an example. But if you go over to peachpit.com slash kelbytv, you'll be able to get this book for 40% off. It is the iPad for Photographers by Jeff Carlson. And all you have to do is go in and plug in the coupon co code kelbytv. This offer ends 1118 of this year, so check it out. Thank you, Peach Pit. All right, and of course, um, we've got another special guest this week. Uh, Mr. R.C. Concepcion is going to have a little tutorial a little bit later on. But first, Pete's going to kick things off with something fashion-y, I believe. Well, I was just going to do a little quick down and dirty makeup photo retouching for folks out there that might give you some ideas of how you could get in here and work on some images. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at my computer, what I've got here is I've got this lovely uh, shot of this model. And what I want to do is I want to jazz it up and maybe... Yes, this is a model, but maybe this might be somebody that you did a photo shoot for or whatever and they wish they had done their makeup or maybe they're not that great with doing their makeup mm -hmm. and they don't have somebody wonderful like Shelly to like come Shelley. over yes, and exactly. help, help do stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is a way you can kind of juice up their makeup and do something neat with what's going on with what you have. Mm -hmm. First thing you're probably going to want to do is you're going to want to come in and you're going to create a new layer. Now you may want to look at, let's, let's start with the lips right here. And what I'm going to do is I want to just give this an extra burst of color. So instead of red, because that's too easy, I'm going to go something like this. And I'm just going to choose uh, that color right there. And if I start painting, that's really not going to do a lot. And that's going to look horrible. But if I simply come over here and change the blend mode to soft light, now as I start to paint, it's blending and it's merging. It's as if I'm just coming over and coloring the paint right across the lips. And the great thing is, is once I get this down, even if I, let's say I come out and I go a little too far over there, I simply choose a mask, I come in, I make sure it's set for black, and I can just paint back and trim out any areas that I might have gone over just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I've immediately got a nice, bright, vibrant color to the lips. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, because it's on its own layer, I can lower down the opacity if it's a little too much, or I could crank it all the way up. Mm -hmm. I've got full control over that. Same thing's going to happen. Let's say I want to add some eyeshadow, something going on up here. Once again, I'm going to go with a new blank layer, and I'm going to, let's do, let's go back to red here. Bright red, if I take this, swipe that across, just not going to really look nice. But however, just by simply making that one change to soft light, now I've got this whole section that I can paint in and I can go as wild or as subtle as I'd like. And I'm just gonna come in here and just do a quick little painting across the eyes. Now you'll see what happened over here. I went a little too high once again. Mask, come in <coughs> and just make sure to take care of any overrun over there. So in just a couple quick strokes, you can see how I've gone from that to that. Mm -hmm. But as they say on infomercials, wait, that's not all. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. I'm going to come in, and one of the things, because she's been lit and it's flat lighting, we miss some of the cheekbones, some of the, 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 the shape of her face, so we might want to just add a little more contour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and change this, uh, my brush, to a black, and I'm going to come in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to change this to uh, multiply, but I'm going to drop <coughs> my brush down very low. And I'm going to do that by just simply hitting my keyboard 2, and you'll watch my opacity up here goes to 20%. Another little keyboard shortcut is if I want to change the size of my brush, I hold command, I'm sorry, control and option, and now I pull to the right and it gets bigger. I pull to the left and it gets smaller. I pull up, and the hardness 
stays very soft. If I pull it down, it gets super hard. Mm -hmm. I want this nice and soft, so I'm going 0%, and I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint certain areas in here. And don't worry that, yeah, we'll even do a little bit under there. But what we're doing is we're just going to shape uh, certain areas of the face quickly. And the good news is, is once I do that, it looks horrible right now. <laughs> But what I'm gonna do is come in and I'm simply, there's several ways to do this, but the easiest way, I'm just gonna come in with Gaussian blur and I'm gonna crank up the blur however much I want until it gets to about the way I like it, right about there. And then I do okay. And look at the difference. I'm just starting to bring in a little bit of stuff going on there. It's starting to give a little shadow. And finally, I'm just gonna switch and go to white because if you're gonna put in shadows, you definitely need to put in the highlights. So I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of setting it to multiply, I'm going to set it to screen. And I've got my brush. I'm going to brush down a highlight right here. I'm actually going to bump this up to 30% instead of 20. I'm going to hit this area in here, this area in here. Let's get the chin. And uh, just maybe right across here. And then all I'm going to do, since I already have my filter set up with my Gaussian blur from last time, all I have to do is hit Command F and it goes ahead and applies that blur right across there. Now you can see kind of before and mm -hmm. after. It's just giving a little bit of a bunt, punch. I don't like the shadows too much, so I'm just going to bring it down because it's on its own level. So now we can see really quickly, I could do this in about 30 seconds. I went from that, let me get that a little bit closer. So I went from that to that. Obviously, I'm trying to do this so you can see what's going on, but you could do this very simply, very easily, mm -hmm. and give you nice, subtle, or very harsh, depending on what you want to do with your photo retouch. And it's all about just simply setting your brush for soft light if you want it to blend nicely, for shadows, multiply, and for highlights, screen. And you just go in there and paint real quickly, and you can jazz up. Hey, can I add an impromptu tip? Yes, you may. Really quickly? Um, you can, what you can, well, another thing you can also do is because you're using a pressure sensitive tablet, yep. set your brush, the transfer, which is the opacity of the brush, to pen pressure. And then just like in reality, yep. you can lightly dab those areas of makeup on there. So that's certainly another option of applying it very softly. So. I knew if I did this, it'd yeah. tease a tip out of you. I oh, just yeah. felt like it was coming. Yeah. So yeah, no, but uh, no, it's great. And uh, of course, the important thing is, is keeping those things on their own layer. Right. Each element separately. Because now I can, even if it's way too much, I can lower mm -hmm. everything to get a much subtle, yes. more. You don't, you don't have to go back and start yep. over. All right. Let us take a quick break. We're going to come right back. RC's got a little thing for us. We're going to give some stuff away, wrap things up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Now, of course, it is creeping fast into the holiday season, and it's time to start doing your shopping. Now, the one thing we all hate about shopping for other people is that we don't know when it's in it for us, except the joy True. of making someone else happy. And that's what the season's all about. No. Well, there's good news. There is good news. We at the National Association of Photoshop Professionals are offering a great special. If you're an existing member, you can buy a friend a membership as a gift and it will extend your membership by two months. So if you have a friend that you've been nagging to join NAP, you just don't know how to get them to join in, buy them a gift, and it will benefit you as well. So be sure to uh, make sure you check out that at photoshopuser.com slash promos, where you can find out all the information regarding that. Give the gift of NAP to a friend or family member. I find I'm much more generous when I get something out of it. Yes, yep. exactly. All right. We have something else, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> great segue. And uh, now we're going to go to RC, who has a great tip for us. So we're going to check this out, and we'll be right back. All right. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Listen, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to color correct in video. And one of the things that I think that Photoshop does very, very well is the production of video. I know. It sounds odd. But they do it well, they outline it well, and I've been on tour for quite some time, and this is the part that gets people the most excited about it. Now, 
when you're working with video, there's going to be times that you're going to need to brighten and darken and move stuff around. And it's probably a good idea for you to be able to know that you can do all of that stuff using adjustment layers as you would with anything else inside of a camera or inside of Photoshop. Let's take a look right here. Here we have some video footage, right? So you have one video footage here, then you have another piece of video here, then you have another piece of video here. I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see it. Now, it's not really all that important what the video is right now because I just kind of want to show you some effects and what you can do here. Now, you'll see that when I go to this clip here, it highlights this layer, this bottom layer, right? If I move over to the next clip, it highlights the next clip in the series. If I click on the third one, it highlights the third clip that we have here in the series. So it's automatically selecting those in reverse order inside of the video group. So when you apply an adjustment layer, by default, what will happen is it will automatically attach it to that one individual clip. So let's say that I want to take this clip here and I want to make it a little bit brighter. Well, you can do that with a curves adjustment. Having it selected, right, I'm going to come over here, see that that's selected there. I'll go to the black and white cookie and under there I'm going to select curves. That automatically creates a curves adjustment layer and you see that arrow? It's tied right to this one layer. Now what I can do here is I can grab the properties panel and adjust the curve and watch. Brighter, darker. So now you're using controls and tools that you are familiar with inside of Photoshop. It makes it very easy. Now, let's say that I wanted to do something else. Let's say that I wanted to do a, uh, let's see, hue and saturation adjustment. You see that it also creates one with an arrow going down, tied to that one individual layer. So if I want to change the color, there we go. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit more pop in color. Watch. If you take a look before, after. All right, just a little bit of pop there. Now. What if I wanted to make it a black and white? Well, I could always grab these layers and drag them into the trash. And then right from here, I can go ahead and I can select black and white from the list. They're adjustment layers, just as you would work with anything else inside of Photoshop. And I can even come back in here and click and do targeted adjustment to get it exactly where I need it. So once you have all of that stuff taken care of, You'll say to yourself, all right, well, that's for that one clip, right? So if you scroll, 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 you'll see that the next clip is in color and the next clip is in color. Well, that has everything to do with the fact that this is tied to that one individual layer. If you want it to be for the entire clip, just grab the adjustment layer and drag it above the video group. The moment that you drag it above the video group, then this is an effect that is applied through the entire image. And you'll see that the timeline has it set up on top of the video group and it's playing for that amount of time, the amount of time of the first clip. You want to play for the whole thing? Go over here, click on that, move it all the way across, instant. Now all of the video clips that you're working with have black and white tied to them. So if you're an app member, I have an entire class on how to be able to work with this stuff over at the Photoshop user site. Go there and take a look at the class on Photoshop and video. We cover all of this stuff and we add some special effects like text. Uh, we do transitions. We add music. You're going to absolutely love it. But there's my tip. Hopefully it helps for you. Back to you guys. <laughs> Right. Guess what? We're at the end of the show, and so the thing people have been waiting for is a giveaway. Giveaway, of course. And as we've been doing, we're giving away a year NAP membership. And of course, if you're a NAP member already, you will get extended by another year. In addition to that, we have the on one perfect Photo Suite 7. Your copy right here. That and a full year of NAP if you go and enter. And Pete's going to tell you how to do that. That's right, Corey. All you need to do is go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Make sure you pick Photoshop User TV from the drop-down menu. Fill out all the different parts right here. Leave us a comment or questions that you may have, and you will be in the running for a random drawing to see who gets the prize. All right. So uh, that just about wraps things up this week. I want to leave you with one more thing. Be sure and check us out over at Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Photoshop user. So check that out for random tips and promos. That's where we're having all our latest info, so be sure to check that out. Thank you for joining us again this week, Mr. Pete. Yep, Corey, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And, of course, Mr. R.C. Concepcion. We're always a pleasure to have him here and share his stuff. So, yep. all right. So we'll see you guys next time here on Photoshop User TV. 
Bye. Take care.